call it day. Stick up in. Good evening, Trinidad and Tobago. It is the 28th of March. You are with me, your Philip Edward Alexander, and I am here to dispel the myths of the political noise. Let's just have a conversation about all of those who want to defend the indefensible and the nonsense they speak into the public space. Today I sat in a meeting in San Fernando on a table of critical thinkers and I felt buoyed. I felt elevated and I said in that meeting that that is the problem that the PNM and the UNC have with the Progressive Empowerment Party because we don't let bullshit fly at all. If you talk it, be ready to defend it. So tonight, we're going to deal with two issues. First of all, we're going to deal with your Prime Minister, Keep Christopher Mugabe Sam Garauli. We're going to deal with him and his statement that the East is a mess. East Trinidad and Tobago, the East-West Corridor, if it is a mess, Keith Rowley, if it's in the bush, Mr. Man, it is because the PNM and only the PNM consign them to that. Mova, Beatum, Lavantel, and Sealots are the products of the People's National Movement. The frustration manifest in the communities that we call at-risk, hotspots, dispossessed, broken. 56 years we independent. Not one of these stunting, mocking pretenders in government could find a way to fix anything but their own pocket. Faris Alrawi comes to mind because that preening peacock has done nothing of value to this nation, for this nation, since being elevated to Attorney General. I said at the point in time, he was not deserving of the post, and the lady that I buy doubles from in Starlight Shopping Plaza, it would be a better Attorney General. Three and a half years later, so said, so done. All Faris has been doing at the behest of the Republican Northern Guard that he represents, the Saddam-esque government that Gary Abood had to send out a warning today. Gary Abood sent out a warning that again, that again they are undermining civil liberties and human rights. The People's National Movement only appear like they want to move the people into jail cells and to herd them into corrals and pens. All of our rights are slowly being undone and tied up in a, in a web of legalese and doublespeak to protect criminals in Trinidad and Tobago, not to help bring criminals to justice. Because you could lock up the entirety of the Black Hen Chicken Clan and you will not end criminality in Trinidad and Tobago until you knock on the door of the Chamber of Commerce, until you go to the Trinidad and Tobago Manufacturers Association, until police ready to kick down doors in Goodwood Park, West Morins, Bayshore, Fairways, Sinclair, Palmis, Gulfview. Miss me with that go bar. Because we're not buying it anymore. If the East in a mess, PNM make that mess. Two oil booms, all your ways. Two oil booms, all your teeth. Two. Two. Two oil booms, all your mismanage and stole. PNM and the people. Yes. Pande is a bandit and an old crook. Yes. Kamla is Pande in a dress. Yes. And I accept all of that. But this I will tell you. The only longevity I am interested in, in using as a measure is longer in office, more time to thief. Under Eric Williams, the country was looted. If he was the prime minister, the man in absolute charge, and he didn't loot, and he didn't know about the looting, he was to be fired for his incompetence. There's no way around it. That explanation don't fly. It don't fly with Eric and it don't fly with Kamala. It's not Kamala the thief, you know. Is she ministers on them? Well, let me tell you what. Is she appoint them? And if they're thief and they're still there with she and she didn't fire them, then 
Well, she good stupid or she teething with them too. And you need to put a government in office that will investigate every single public contract that has ever been awarded in this country since we dropped the Union Jack and raised the red, white, and black. The moment we took responsibility for our own destiny, that meant that the office holders, they were responsible to the law of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. But we've not lived that way as yet because we've played games. We've played lesser evil, who thief more, who they longer, all this kind of nonsense. And when you look at it, we have the same problems. Government after government after government. So Rowley, Kamala Pande, Manning, George Chambers, Robbie, and Eric Williams. And all we have to show for it is a nation worse off than when we were under the Queen. So tell me, you tell me tonight with my black self what we get for independence besides building Goodwood Park, Fairways, Sinclair, Gulf View and Palmis. What did we get? Show me what has been the advantages because if we were still part of the Great Britain, the, Br the British Empire, your passport and your birth certificate would be worth more than the toilet paper it is worth now. As an independent nation, for all the fire truckery we talk, because you could assemble them in a room, you know, they could, the scribes, the eloquent, they pontificate a pile of, of fetid bullshit for you at the drop of a hat. But what do you have to show for it? Because since gaining independence, we've been nothing but a kleptocracy, a nation governed by people dedicated to one thing, looting the country's treasury. Eric Williams, George Chambers, Robinson, Manning, Pandey, Kamla, Rowley, seven bandit clans. We have not benefited. Red or yellow, we have lost every time. And to Kamala Pasan Bissessa, who has her talking heads talking, well, she only had five years and six months, you know. Rome was not built in a day, but it did not need 15,000 days. We've had money to spend, special majority in the parliament, more degrees than a thermometer in the parliament, and all of them, and for all of that, we've benefited nothing. There have been no, not one, not one, proper policy established in this country. In fact, every time, every time you see PNM or UNC politicians breaking ground or cutting ribbon, brace, they are about to mount the treasury because they're not doing that for you. Keep Christopher Mugabe, Sanga Rowley could give two ass about you and Toko. You think I lie? Today I ask, will the real Slim Shady please stand up? Because Keith Christopher Mugabe Sabga Rowley has two tongues in his head. If you have been following his career, you would realize that what Keith Rowley says today may not entirely match up with what he says tomorrow. For example, in the Hansard of July 28, 2000, Madam Mr. Speaker, the basis for this port is some Tobago to to Toko Ferry. Nobody in Tobago wants this. Nobody in Tobago or, to or Toko appreciates it. But that is the grease to have the product created. Do you know who is doing this? The cabinet. By saying that it is a Tobago to Toko Ferry, the government is giving the impression that it is a public purpose. And under that category, the government is now going to proceed to take away people's homes to create this port. So here we have a situation where those who are living on the land enjoying it now, protected by the law, the government is seeking to find a mechanism to acquire the land, then give that land to other private citizens to make money. I tell you, Mr. Speaker, this Toko ferry port has nothing to do with the people of Tobago or Toko. 
pass forward 2018. Same jackass. The highway, he said, is expected to significantly reduce the driving time of motorists in getting to the proposed Toko ferry boat. This was the figure George gave recently as he gave details about the billion dollar project nine months after Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley promised citizens of the Northeastern region a new Toko ferry port that would link them to Tobago and create economic activity. Last November, Rowley said the government was moving a pace to develop the highways from Valencia to Toko and Kamuto to Manzanilla, as well as construct a ferry port in Toko, which would generate economic growth, jobs, and opportunities for people who live in nearby communities. Now listen to me. It should be a crime to lie that brazenly. Last night I, I played, last night I played his words for you. When he said, I went to the Prime Minister in August 2003 to tell him about massive bid rigging taking place in Unicorn. And I pointed out to those who missed the point, he was on his legs in the People's Parliament in 2009. What happened? Keith Christopher Mugabe Sanga Rowley in the six years between. Because when Manning kicked you out of his office and did not take you on, you were supposed to instantly go to the press, call a press conference. A man of integrity and character is about to speak. But this is a nation that buys bullshit by the pound, trading it by the ton. We don't mind. We didn't stop to think, wait a minute. This, 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 this man went to the Prime Minister in 2003 to tell him about massive bid rigging and theft taking place at Judicott and said nothing to nobody of consequence until 2009 when he was fired. Had the Minister of Las Alturas not been fired, had the Commissioner of La Bitco not been given his marching orders, Keith Christopher Mugabe Sabgaroli would have sat, continued to sit in the parliament, eating cabinet food, drinking cabinet wine. That man is a prolific and accomplished liar. Keith Christopher Rowley. The whole people ask me, how do you know, Philip, when Rowley is lying? I said, check to see if his lips move in. Because what he says today and what he says tomorrow, I'll give you a third example. A third. A third example. You can back to Kamala and time, you know. I don't mean I go. You have a big glowing spin stuck there. I'll give you a third example. When Mr. Mann went to read email gate in the parliament, when he went to accuse persons and assassinate characters under the benefit of parliamentary privilege, he said to the nation, had us on the edge of our seats, that he was given a document that showed that the Prime Minister, the Attorney General, assorted ministers and her, and her, and her National Security Advisor were plotting to kill a journalist, among other dastardly acts. And he said he was struck by the act, by, by, by the words. How struck was he? Did he call the police? No, not struck enough for police. Did he call the DPP, whose name was called in email gate as they were going to bug him and listening to him and elevate him because Archie is their partner. Archie will make the DPP a judge and get him out of the way. And, and, and the present commissioner of police, it is his name, Rowley, put in this kakada. And, and how struck was he that they were going to murder Denise Wren? How struck was he that they were going to eavesdrop on the DPP and pervert the course of justice? He didn't call the DPP. He didn't call Denise Wren, who he was certain they were going to murder. He didn't say, Denise, heads up, Echek. Cams and crew coming to kill you. He didn't. 
Denise was left none the wiser. He didn't call the Integrity Commission. He didn't call the media. He took it to the President of the Republic so he could bacchanalize and operationalize his next step. The man has patience, I give him that. So email gate that said that the Prime Minister Kamala Prasad be said, so the Attorney General Anand Ram Logan, Suru Rambachan, and Gary Griffith were plotting to kill Denise Ren and to eavesdrop on the DPP and pervert the course of justice is now in the President's hand. Well, okay, high office holder, what happens next? I was reaching into an empty bag of popcorn. Six months later, Denise Ren, thankfully, is still alive and so is the DPP. Keith Rowley goes back to the president and snatches it back out of his hand. Mr. President, you're not serious. But I want to ask Rowley, how serious were you? He's back to being struck. Struck. He's astounded by the act. Six months it languished in Max Richard's hand. But that doesn't matter to, to, to stupid people incapable of engaging their brain before they open their mouth. He snatched it back out of Max Richard's, Max, Max Richard's hands in an urgent six-month apps time and goes to Ken Gordon. Phase two. Phase two of operationalize and bacchanalize email gate. We've spoken to the president. Now we're going to drag a next high public office holder into the thing, the chairman of the Integrity Commission. Now, he didn't pick up the phone and call Ken Gordon, Secretary Margaret. Say, Margaret, this is the leader of the opposition, Dr. Keith Christopher Mugabe Sabgarauli, and I would like to meet with the chairman of the Integrity Commission on a matter of urgent national importance. And Margaret would have said, my God, we will pencil you in tomorrow morning at six, because after Ken finishes walking around the savannah, he will be in here when the sun rises. You could come to him. No, it was important because they were going to murder Denise Rand. And it was important because they were going to pervert the course of justice and eavesdrop on the DPP. But it wasn't important for the six months it was languishing by Max Richards, and don't forget that. But it was important enough for Keith to not go to the Integrity Commission itself, but to go to Ken Gordon's home in the dead of night and to make a report to Ken Gordon alone. So Keith Rowley, as prosecutor, and Ken Gordon as judge, kangaroo court, justice now, evidence later. This is your prime minister today. And I say without fear of contradiction, anything Keith Rowley tell you, he lie. If you outside and it raining, and Keith Rowley tell you it raining, fold up your umbrella and throw it away. Whatever that is wet in you, can't be rain. Because if Rowley say it's rain, I know he lie. I know he lie. The man is a liar. A prolific and accomplished liar. For those of you arriving late, we are talking about Slim Shady, the real Slim Shady, the double-tongued one, the man who nothing he says today necessarily will measure up with what he said tomorrow. And that is sad that I could say that and anger PNM supporters who would want to know who the hell is me to be assassinating the character and defaming the name of such a holy and righteous man. The same man, double tongue, who called Gary Griffith a potential murderer, an eavesdropper and justice perverter, he also, without apologizing, without retracting, without undoing, appointed Gary as commissioner of police when it served his purpose. And he only appointed Gary Griffith as commissioner of police because all of them wash out. You ever go in a kitchen and see a wash rag and you know it has served, it lived past its expiry date? All of them, all of them, not one of them clean. Not one of them have value. Not Farris, not Stuart, not Marley, not Colm. None of them. The country don't want to hear any of them. The only thing we want to hear from them is goodbye. So they needed somebody. But I think they jump out too soon and appoint Gary too soon. Because Gary has 
picked all of the low-hanging fruits and said all the right things that I knew he would say. But now, now Gary is going to need to up his game. And the entire public that wants to give Gary 100% support, waiting for him to turn the power of the office to the white-collar crimes, the narcotic barons who have moved billions of dollars worth of cocaine through this country. We are looking to him now to do that so that we can anoint him as the chosen one. Because if he doesn't, it will look like, as usual, one law for the black and chickens, and next law for the white collar criminals. Stick up in there. Because that is what the PNM supporters defend. Look to the UNC, and all they have to tell you is Kamala only had five years and six months. To do what you ask in a country the size of a large postage stamp sitting in the middle of the Caribbean, well, in the, in the southern end of the Caribbean Sea. What could she have done, Philip, in five years? Come on, man. Come on. Okay. Let's touch on some important things. She could have united Unitrust, First Citizen Bank, and Home Mortgage Bank to offer, to leverage their resources and offer to all first-time homeowners one up to 1.5 million dollars zero deposit zero in interest for 30 years a house is hardly something that you're gonna pick up and walk away so from the moment that she called the chief the, the, the chief executive officer of unit trust present chief executive officer of home mortgage man present chief executive officer of first citizen man present let's talk chaps we are going to offer a product to the nation we are going to leverage the $50 billion that is sitting in Unitrust account, and we're going to use the facilities of the First Citizens Bank networks throughout the country, and we will use the mortgage structure of the Home Mortgage Bank and give an offer to first-time homeowners the ability to own a home interest-free, deposit-free, so that we could lower the mortgage to $500 per 100000 ending the need for squatting, ending the need for renting perpetually, creating an opportunity where even minimum wage, baton twirling, chicken and chips box packing, minimum wage earners could own a home. Why? Because the science says in countries where home ownership is high, Crime is low. Give the people a stake in their country and they will defend it. A man who rents in a house may or may not clean the yard. You ever watch if you're renting a car? How you treat that car? You ever see a man who rents in a car wash a rental car? But his car he will wash once a week. A man who owns a home will not only clean his yard, he will clean the pavement and the road in front of his home. So Kamala, you could have done that. That would have taken about six months to roll out. It didn't require much advertising because people would have been lined up outside First Citizens Bank from day one just to pre-qualify. And the system would have been simple. Bring all your documents, what we need from you, birth certificate, ID card, police certificate of character, job letter, and come. And we will pre-qualify you based on that. You have been working here in KFC for $2,250 for the past six years? Good. 40% of $2,250 is what? $1,000? You qualify for a mortgage of $200,000 under this plan. And if your spouse come and he earning a little more, and he qualify for three thousand together. You qualify for five thousand dollars or or five thousand dollars, five hundred dollars per hundred thousand dollars. So five thousand dollars between you all could buy a million dollar house. And we could have put people in their own homes, so they could have defended their communities, raised their children, paid, and keep kept paying. I tell people all the time. Eh? 
when the bank sees in houses, is middle class house that are seizing. You see, poor people, if you let a poor man get his toe in that door, brother, if he have to pull up grass with his hand to make money, he pay in that mortgage. Go and ask Sabga in Standards. Go and ask Mohammed in Fens. And go and ask Thomas Pantin in Courts. What built those empires? Poor people with the $10 and the $15 a week, them don't play the ass with that. Because you give them a chance, they ain't losing that. They know how hard it come. They know how hard it come. So they ain't losing that. So it is an investment in the future. Land appreciates in value. What was built in Diamond Vale that sold for $50,000 selling for $5 million now? Land appreciates. Property appreciates. It is an investment in the future. But more importantly, if 8 out of 10 houses on a street are owned by people who own their homes, they will prevent gang blocks and drug blocks and any other bacchanal taking place in their community. They will link up with the police service. They will have their neighborhood crime watch. They will make sure that their community clean. If the garbage truck late, they will know. They will have little WhatsApp thread. Jones Street, they go Martin. What is, what is that noise all they hearing outside there? Because they're living together. They are pack up and leave. Can't pack up and leave. This is mine. And when I, shuffle, when I shuffle off this mortal coil, I have something to leave for the kids. It's not much kids, but it's what I was able to pay a mortgage on for 30 years. And it may only be 300000 400000 500000 now, but it's $500,000 more than I had when I started, so please go forward with that. You could have done that. You could have done that. And you see, if you were serious about caring about the people because you and Rowley know how to bullshit, you all bring both of them higher Obama people. Obama people work for the PNM and the UNC in the last election. I laugh when I hear that. I laugh. I say, but these Americans, these foreigners really know how to take money from small island people. Stupid. Stupid, stupid. If you really did care about the people, you would have made home ownership for all as a pillar of government, like the Progressive Empowerment Party says. And it would have been done in the first six months. Because it's quick and it's easy to do. Everything that you need to do it is there. By the stroke of a pen. Watch me. I just abolished stamp duty on all houses under $1 million for first-time homeowners. Watch that. Watch that. I just abolished it. Stamp duty is gone. Look at this next one. I just removed the VAT and the import duty on basic building materials so I could drive a renaissance in small starter home developments. Look at this one. That's a joint venture with all small contractors throughout the country who want to acquire land, we will assist you. Acquire land and do developments so that you can bring in houses so that poor people can afford under a million dollars. We're working with you. We're not subsidizing. We're working with you to help you make it a reality. Providing state support and equity. And all of a sudden, all of these people who we want to kick in their face and spit on their head and laugh at them. We want to make memes about them. I will never forget that poor black girl who asks if that they're making any sense. They have one Syrian, one Chinese, one white family in this country who is going to live up in the up in the HDC ghetto community, they send she to live and tell her walk 20 minutes to the highway to take your children, a flag down taxi, rain or sun, to take your children to school. And if Sabga and Abud and Chin and Thompson they want that for themselves, don't want that for black people too. Let all of we want all for all of we, one family, live together, one people under one flag. Let's say, let's say what I want for me and mine, I want for you and yours. Let's live in harmony. Children and Tabeo. One nation, one people under one flag. That all of a sudden, we've removed the drivers of criminal behavior. At least one of them. What's the other one? Kamala. And I'm talking to Kamala because Kamala telling people and the UNC Seco fans are telling people they only had five years. My minister of education, day one, would be working together with the constituency board to establish a constituency board of supervisors. 41 supervisors of education in F1 in every constituency. 
Their mission is to identify all the schools and what is required to transform them by a model into 10-year schools so that we could say, three years into government, we abolished the SEA. So the first two years of our office, they will have an SEA because we meet it. But we will put the infrastructure in place that by the third year, if you're in standard five, next term, you're going into form one in the same school. Because we want the school to be a 10-year school. Why? So that the teachers, so that the children could grow with their peers. Grow with their peers from 5 to 15. Do you know that the numbers say that the community that you come from, you are less likely to take advantage and do wrong to people that you grow with? Knit the community together. From 5 to 15, these children grow together. And they grow in the same school facilities, so they're not torn apart because, because SEA is one of the most tragic things children go through in this country. It rips them apart from everything they know and drops them into something that they don't know. And for the next six months is fear and anxiety. And it is because we have voted jackasses into office because we have all the school places we need. But you see, for them to abolish the SEA, they have to admit that our school system, our education system is broken. Because if you're spending $5 billion on public education, Fatima College on the north of, Muk of Mukarapu Road cannot be getting consistently for the past 30 years better results than Mukarapu Junior Secondary on the south side of the road. Something not making sense. If it's the same Ministry of Education, the same teachers, the same curriculum, the same money, what not adding up here? Failure of the government to put a proper system in place. But a progressive empowerment party government will make sure that all schools are prestige schools from the word go. How, how would you do that, Philip? By assigning a grade point average to every child and set a national average. So if the national average is 4.0 for Fatima and Mokorapo alike, the teachers in Fatima and Mokorapo will have a responsibility to get all of their charges to 4.0. And if at the end of the term, because every term there will be a grade point average exam, and at the end of the term, the teachers who fail to bring their charges up to the national average will be fired. They will be fired unless they could prove that you give them to this stupid children, they'll be fired. We need teachers in love with teaching. On the flip side of that, it is also a progressive empowerment party policy that teachers will be paid well, very well as a matter of fact. Teaching will become, when they tell you don't get into teaching, it's not supposed to make money, teaching should make money. We've had the money. We've spent the money on nonsense. All of the senators we spend money on in the Senate that we do not need. That money could pay all the teachers in Trinidad and Tobago a better salary. The $100 million that we spend on the presidency office for a president we do not need, that money could pay teachers a better salary. It is time to stop bullshitting with the people and come straight. Highly paid professional teachers and to the teachers you get promoted based on your own development. Unblemished career. Every time you move from, from degree to master's, from master's to doctorate, of course, you need a doctorate in education and at least 10 years service to become a vice principal. But vice principal and principal qualifies for tax free status. Similar to the people who just jump in the Senate for two days and they're tax free and they bring nothing to the table. Our teachers should. Our teachers should. And again, Kamala, if you had cared about the people, this is something similar to simple to do. 
Give the teachers support. Give them incentive. Work with the children. Put counselors, guidance, and psychological counselors in the school. Get social development and management involved. Because we are signatories to the United Nations rights of a child. And one of those rights is the right to a proper education. And if their home or their community or their lack of breakfast or the fact that they have to get up 2 o'clock in the morning to reach in the school for 6 o'clock, all of that is a function of social development and management and all of those issues could solve. All of them could solve. All of those issues could solve. So if we solve those issues and we get all of our children excited and passionate about getting an education, then we won't lose the 7,000 children that we lose every year. 3,000 fail out of the system from form 1 to form 5, they just go missing. And about 4,000 get no marks at all at CXC time because they're not interested. You've not captured their minds. They may not be academically inclined. They may have dyslexia or some other learning disability and your system is not set up to find and treat. So we treat our children with scant courtesy and respect. So now they drop out and every year 7,000 new children looking for a way at the time when hormones racing through their body where every boy want to impress girls and she jumping in car and going move it down and your two pockets inside out you're looking to do anything to get some money to interest her and that's how we end up with the petty crime that we have and when the drug man pass and tell you, throw a keys for you, tell you, drive that to Diego Martin for me tonight, you have a $2,000 to get. You ain't thinking twice. You ain't thinking twice. You ain't thinking twice. We've left our people behind. We treat Mova, Beatum, Lavantil, Silot, Bagatel, Covin, Rich Plain, Enterprise, and Bacadere. We treat these, La Keta, Talparo. We treat these communities and the people from those communities as if they're transient and don't matter. Your mission in life is to, is to serve. <laughs> you are labor and consumer. Hush your mouth. Smoke cigarette, drink rum, wine on a bumsi. That is your lot in life. We've never had a government who looked to transform the lot of all of our people and create an environment by which they could maximize their potential. When the current, this PNM government stole our line and said, like a rising tide raises all boats, ma'am, this is what we mean. When we say a rising tide lifts all boats, we mean twin Fatima to Mokorapo, that Mokorapo must not, cannot, ought not, should not, do less at the end of the term than Fatima. Because if they did fire the principal, fire the vice principal, fire the teachers. Start over. Exchange. Put all the, put the principal, the vice principal, and all the teachers from Mokorapo in Fatima. Put the ones from Fatima in Mokorapo. If at the end of the term, term nothing changed, fire them. If at the end of the term, the Fatima teachers go over there and make the Mokorapo students learn, and Fatima that now have Mokorapo teachers do less, you know, the squeaky wheel, give it the grease, bust their throat, send them on the way. Because there will be people begging for teacher work. Because teachers' starting salary should be $12,500 minimum. Teachers should have from the first, from the time you get past, from the time a teacher gets past probation, they should automatically pre-qualify for home ownership. Automatically. Because your teachers and your farmers are the foundation of your country. We have too many highly paid cloth peddlers, lawyers, shit snakes, and the people upon whom we rely for the betterment of our country, we treat with scant courtesy and disrespect. Our farmers... And our teachers, Kamala, within three years, we will right size. Don't tell me about five years, six months bullshit. And I tell people all the time, when you elect, when you are elected the president of the United States of America or the prime minister of England, you cannot blame the last man. You can't. You have a hundred days to find out the lay of the land. And from there, partner, 
this hot potato is yours because they will tell you we are sent to call you you fight for the work you beg for the work you spend money to get the work you jump up and down to get the work you have the work do the blasted work don't tell we about who do what before you don't tell me that Kamala Kamala you say a bundle baji and push body how come you come out of office with less farms than when you went in. If you don't care, EMBD was giving away land to friends and financiers for kickback and corruption. And you know, because I know you know. I know you know. I know you put that little short man minister there to handle people. I know. I went up El Socorro in the office and I watch and I see what was going on. I know you know that you could have identified in quick time in the first year, my God, the Central Statistical Office should have this information now. What is the consumption pattern, the consumption data of food in Trinidad and Tobago? We could identify and pair all the things that we think could replace because you could go in the grocery and you could buy a bag of flour for $20 or you could buy a bread food for five. Feed the family. What we grow in this country because it comes out of the ground practically for free, just add labor. We could have made sure that all of the available land under the EMB, EMBD, um, Karani, Petrotrin, identify all the fertile land that could be put to the work of growing food because we should set as a target in quick time to be food independent. You see, this nation shouldn't be at the mercy of Hadco, Amco, Massey, and ADM and them. We mustn't be at the mercy of the people who supply them. We should be feeding off our farmers, of our lands. Because if you cared, if either of you cared, in three years, you could have already started putting short-term to medium crops into our food chain. And it would have made a difference. Because I know for a fact, kale grows for a profit in Trinidad and Tobago and sells for $6. The exact same product selling in Price Mart for $45. $45. And your medium term to long term plan, mango, guava, breadfruit, zabaka, um, citrus. Fruits that, trees that hardy, that could take licks. I tell people, you can't kick down a guava tree, you know. You can't fight with a mango tree until it stop bearing, you know. Bre breadfruit, avocado, them thing will bear for life. Lime, lemon, come on. Come on. In five years, we could have had a million breadfruit trees. I see all of a sudden people talking breadfruit, and I'm proud. Because we've educated the nation on this live video that breadfruit is the only low glycemic starch. Unlike rice, white potato, and processed bleach flour, it doesn't spike your sugar. It stabilizes it. That our people should really be eating cassava and edos and dasheen and sweet potato and breadfruit. You see, if that was our diet, we will be getting strong and healthy. Not only will we save the five billion US dollars for foreign exchange to import the food, but we will lower our public health bill as well. Because our people will not be getting type 2 diabetes, eating sugar laden, cornstarch full of bullshit from massy stores. And that's a fact. And every single Minister of Health knows that. CNN. CNN just put out a story. Sugary drinks linked to higher risk of premature death, especially for women. Solo, SM Jalil, Coca-Cola, Blue Waters, they're killing our people with sugar. Killing our people. And we could have been growing and making and selling popo juice and passion fruit juice and citrus punch from our land and we still could you see the whole north coast bear they go martin maraval bear i drive up south the other day and i'm driving by soon's great wall and i look right and the entire top of a mountain cut open they quarrying the heart of the country profiteering gouging plundering kill it this is a country I will, never, I will never forget my uncle tell me when I was small, Trinidadians, if we can't eat it or screw it, we just kill it. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. 
So we could have fixed home ownership for all. We could have fixed education and we could have fixed, because you see, once you identify the consumption data in the nation, you tell yourself, okay, I have 100,000 acres of land. I have 20,000 acres of land. Let's use 20,000 acres. If I have 20,000 acres of land, I want to get 10,000 farmers and make an acre of land available to each of them. And this is the plan. We're going to say that Trinidad eats X amount of pumpsite and X amount of pimento peppers and X amount of carrots. So what are we growing? Cabbage. Cabbage. I know a man growing on a private lot of land. Cabbage by the ton. Food could grow. We could be a net food exporter in quick time. Stick a pin. Stick a pin in that. But when you identify the consumption data of the country, then you tell the farmer, let's work together. I will give you this acre of land. And we've identified for this acre of land, pimento peppers. We've identified it at $5 a pound. I'm just joining the reference. And we think every three months, we're supposed to get a thousand pounds of pepper. And as long as you give us a thousand pounds of pepper every three months, we will give you that $5 every three months. So you could make your money growing your food in our land. You don't have to pay us a single cent, but you could never own this land. But for as long as you are hitting that target, you will not only be allowed to utilize this land, that if you hit your target two years in a row, because one sparrow don't make a summer, but if you hit your target two years in a row, we will give you the opportunity to expand to two acres. Let's see if you could hit that. Because we could create farming entrepreneurs. Do you know that in Germany and countries like Switzerland and Sweden, they have, they have atmosphere-controlled agriculture buildings growing food, 40 and 50 stories tall, scythe and body, growing in a, in a skyscraper. We could make organic food, organic sugar, this country, and look, we ain't even talk yet about cocoa, the best in the world comes from Trinidad, that will never change. We ain't talk about honey, the best in the world comes from Toko. They're gonna mash up Toko and build a port, but we, the best honey in the world coming from Toko, we ain't talk about that yet. We ain't talk about that yet. Fastest way to make us some money. We ain't talk about agro-processing. If you plant a million breadfruit trees, then put down facilities to, 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 to what do you call it when you take the moisture out of the fruit and, 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 you, and you make chips, organic oven-baked chips. The market for that is so huge. If the entirety of Trinidad and Tobago was making breadfruit chips to sell to America, we could make it up. Because that is the way of the world. People want to live longer. They realize the food that they're eating killing them. We could have made entrepreneurial farmers. We could have made this country food self-sufficient. We could have lowered the cost of living by lowering the cost of food. We could have created jobs for farm assistants and farm hands. We could have done all of that, Kamala, in three years. You had five years and six months. Public health. Public health didn't need a billion dollar children's hospital in Coover. What we needed were 41 accident and emergency healthcare centers, one for each constituency, 24-7, open all day, all night, complete with minor surgery suite. And we were to elevate and create a job description called nurse practitioners and offer a nurse practitioner course in UE to move our nurses dehydrate, to move our nurses to nurse practitioners, that is above nurses, below doctors and have doctors on call round the clock because nurse practitioners manage the casualty departments in hospitals and if it requires a doctor they beep him while they're stabilizing the person and you could have the same three major general hospitals we have in the country in port of spain mount hope san fernando and even tobago and make them first world hospitals you're gonna pass them to john hopkins and tell hopkins oh look come and run it now because we know the ass we're doing when it comes to hospital but give your people an insurance card, medical insurance. If you're earning $100,000 or less a year, the state pays for it. And if you're earning more than $100,000, you will contribute to your health card, but you're getting from ophthalmology and dentists inside of there. So you don't need to go anywhere else. Everything taken care of, just flash that card. So if you had 41 constituency-based accident and emergency open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, Porter Spain casualty didn't have to look like old mass. Didn't have to look. And minor surgery sweet to stabilize. Gunshot, stabbing, accident, dismemberment, cut hand, all that kind of back and hand. All of it could be done right there. Dedicated GPS control paramedic ambulance per unit. 41 of them so that you know 
that within a three mile radius of the hospital, you could dispatch that ambulance on any emergency call. And the rest of the ambulances throughout the country assign them to the fire station and the police station so that you have at least two, if not three ambulances available to the country because right now we operate some days on 22 when we should be having at least 82 ambulances available. GPS monitored, paramedic operated ambulances that when they reach your house, they start to stabilize whatever the problem is taking you to the closest accident and emergency center in your constituency. Do you know that that would have cost half the cost of what it took to build the Coover Hospital? All of that, all of that. We didn't need the Coover Hospital, but you see the Coover Hospital is for China. Like Napa Sapa Tapa was for China, it's not for Trinidad. That's for, that's for China. That's why the Chinese embassy built a bigger house for the Chinese in Marvel than our own president occupying today. China here to make Chinese work. China here to spend Chinese money. China here to sell Chinese material. That's why China here, China didn't care about Trinidad. And if along the way, they could take Tobago and the Pitch Lake, well, they're going with that. They're going with that. What, what are your crown jewels they will identify and that's what they want to go with? And all of this is fact. Home ownership, public health, education, food production. Let's talk security, Kamala. You had five years and six months, and I tell the nation, within six months of a progressive empowerment party government, two things would have occurred. We would have shut the nation's borders down tight, ending, ending. The drug trade, the gun trade, human trafficking, all manner of contraband. End it, shut it down. There will be three dedicated national ports where Coast Guard, Immigration, Customs are available. Go there. If you're fishing, Within the three miles of our territorial water, you're safe. If you drift out of our waters to come back in, stop and search to make sure you ain't dragging cocaine underwater. Sonar boys to make sure that the Mexican cartel not sending the cocaine to Trinidad and submarines. We could have sonar boys, sonar boys and, dis and, and, and dispatch drones. We could have made a maritime security wall out of all those unusable oil barges. Six of them repurposed around Trinidad and Tobago connected by a 360 degree radar equipped with fast attack boats and interceptor um, helicopters. Three mile line in the sea. If you're coming from outside of there, yield to be searched. Because we are a narco state and we want that to stop. And within six months of us coming to office, construction of a proper port facility at Point Lisas would have begun five times the size of the port of Port of Spain because the port of Port of Spain, all it does is make traffic. Because 95% of all the containers on the port of Port of Spain coming off the port to go out of Port of Spain. So why put all of that on skinny little rights and road to cause more traffic in town. Put the port of Port of Spain in Point Lisas five times the size. Why? For two good reasons. One, we want to compete with port services internationally and offer transshipment services to international ships because that's big money. Ask Singapore and ask Dubai. That is money that could eclipse what we make in oil and gas. And we could do it because we're between North, Central and South America and a spitting distance from the Panama Canal. More importantly, because we have that port, any containers that are coming to Trinidad to stay in Trinidad must be unstuffed on the port. This is a narco state that has moved hundreds of billions of dollars of cocaine around the world. And yet 40% of all container traffic that come into Trinidad and Tobago are allowed to pass through unchecked. The insanity of it but it could be fixed and it should have been fixed and a real government would have fixed it, Kamala. So tell your people, stop giving us the bullshit about five years and six months because all you did in five years and six months is fatten your friends and your family. You've made box drain billionaires in Trinidad and Tobago, built for us a Coover hospital that we never needed and still don't. Still don't, they're gonna to have to operationalize it because it did. Like how we operationalizing Brian Lara Stadium. But I had to tell Daryl Smith, when he was the Minister of Sport and had one successful event in Brian Lara Stadium and applauded himself, I did the math. And I said, if you have zero maintenance cost for the next 100 years and you have an event like that every month, we might 
we might break even for the $1.2 billion that white elephant cost us. Trinidad and Tobago, if your pride is not in yourself and your country, if your pride is in your political party, that is not real pride. That is false pride. Pride supposed to be, how could we work together all our way to elevate everybody's condition, give everybody a chance to maximize their potential, lower the price of food, lower the price of housing. We talked about housing earlier. You know how many houses in this country are owned by drug lords and corrupt politicians? We have an idea for a property tax. On your principal dwelling, your primary home, 0% tax. On your next house, 5%. The house after that, 10%. The house after that, 15%. And moving on. Until it is no longer feasible for you to hoard housing, to hide cocaine and corruption dollars, put them back on the market because it is a country the size of a big postage stamp. We need a better chance to be good. Ashmin Mohammed said, the thing is, it sounds amazing, too good to be true. And the fact of the matter is, you've been beaten, cuffed, and kicked every day of your life. You've lived in a cellar. You're wearing one old bus up drawers. They're feeding you slop. So if I come and tell you, they could unshackle you, they could wash you down, they could give you clothes and feed you a better meal and no more cuff and kick, that will sound too good to be true, too. But this is not how your life was supposed to be. We always needed a better country. Didn't we? Didn't we know that? Didn't we know that we always needed a better country? So why did we continue to settle for the madness of the PNM and the UNC? Why did we continue to settle for that when better could have always been done? Now, now, tell them, miss us with your bullshit. We know better. We know we could have it better. We insist we want it better. Get yourself up, stand up, speak up, stand together, one people under one flag. Let's bring it back. Every day I sit and wonder how this sweet island gets so bitter. No salary, but cost of living gets higher. We in humane behavior, things don't turn upside down. Smiling faces becomes a frown. Guns gone off, we know living fear.
nation is one vote away. A better, a better nation is one decision away. This Saturday at noon, we meet 19 stand more when you open the Republic. This Saturday at noon, open my tables, chairs, we're under the mango tree. Come, just, just show up. What we have, we share with everybody. If you have things to bring, bring and share with everybody else. Come and meet the family you never knew you always needed. Come and see what it feels like to belong to a real patriotic, civic-minded movement. Come and see. Come and see a management structure in a line. Nobody will play boss for nobody. Come and see. A political party devoid of ego and greed. We tell people, check that shit at the door. There are plenty of people who get full catch. They, they join the PEP. They get caught up with their own self. They fly up in their head. They go out there to form their own. They want to do it bigger and better. And they fall flat because they forgot that what built the Progressive Empowerment Party is dignity, respect, and hard work. And you see them last two, hard work. Plenty of people in this country are allergic to that. But slowly but surely, the Creator has amassed a crew that I couldn't pick, but if I, had, if I had to do it, I would have designed them just the way they are. We have the best of the lot. Our people are committed to a better Trinidad and Tobago. Saturday is a holiday, a 
holiday. These people have been working two, three meetings a week. They just launched Baratario. They're working hard to organize the pep market on the 7th of April. They're working hard to have a rally in San Grande in two weeks' time. They're planning a back in times party for Easter Sunday and they're organizing Tuna, Tampuna Road Arima. The opening of the East Hub, all that happening, and they get a holiday in the center of the thing, and they say, Oops, let me get some dumb time. They champing at the bit, not champing, the real word is champing. And I found that out, and I want to share that with all of y'all. So you remember that when you're speaking it proper English. But listen, they're coming out Saturday, and they're working hard, and all the management and all of the people. And if you are in any way management in the Progressive Empowerment Party, your presence is expected this Saturday at noon. And if you're in assistant management, co-management, deputy management, you as well. And if you hope to be, would like to be, want to volunteer your services and get involved, want to bring your skills and expertise to work and to bear to this country, Come, come Saturday at noon. Come be a part of the Orange Revolution dedicated to a better Trinidad and Tobago. Come, come and see what it is like. Our phone number is 347-4PEP. That's our hotline, but everybody on the, on the management has give out the number like normal. 3474PEP, our email address, primary email address is peptrinbago at gmail.com. Send any queries you have today. We have a website, pep. TT.com. Janice Lehman Creaky, our PRO, has that website operating at the highest it has ever been. And I'm very proud of her, and I would like to say that now. Janice also heads up our communication team. And all those fancy graphics and everything that you see coming out of this party, Janice Lehman Creaky, public relations officer of the PEP. She organizes all of our bookings, all of our media presence. She is unstoppable, Janice. We have we have the hardest working chairman in politics, Felicia Hole, and she's taken on the responsibility also of managing finance. If you would like to assist us financially, we right now have an edited video of our opening of Barataria. We need to raise $20,000 to broadcast that on CNC3. If you would like to assist with that in any way towards that broadcast specifically, let me give you a little hint of what, what that song is like, yeah? Listen to what we want to put on CNC3. Why I joined Progressive Empowerment Party. I saw a video of Philip and... All. Food. Let's plant our own food, forget about our food import bill. We have farmers inside of here, right? Encourage them, give them the backing, give them the financing, give them the technical support, we have it. The youth in Port of Spain South, we have two options. If you're not academic, the, the only other option is to go into criminal activities. And one in environments for the hospitality and civic-minded spirit now. You know, I'm a young woman in this country who's seeing things going down the drain and I want to make a difference. But today, as I start thinking about what I was going to say to the people of Baratario, I went back a little bit. Went into this very personal. Civil Empowerment Party, the PEP. -E Let me tell you something, eh? That little team that you're hearing talking there, eh? all of them. All of them, not one of them was in politics before. The first time I put them to speak on a podium, they shake, they shake. I remember Lima, I, re I remember all of them. All of them, the first time they put them to speak to the crowd, they shake, listen to them now. And I tell them, you know, nobody reads, nobody writes. What you know, you speak. So you have to make sure you know. Come and listen. I mean, help us put that because this message Food independence is the most critical independence of all. Water, water, the Diego Martin River. The Chunsi, because you're crossing over their river. Now, why can't we elect to office a government that understands that 24 7 water is as simple as saving the water that falls magically from the sky 
Help us put that on TV. Help us wake those up who don't know. We have it ready to go. We need to raise $20,000. You could make a donation check to us for $5,000 and make it out to Guardian Media Limited and put it in Felicia Holder hand. And if you want a thank you at the end of it in credits, we gladly do that in whoever, whosoever name you want it in because we need your help. We need your assistance. No, we do not. We didn't come this far to only come this far. We do not want deep pocket financiers who want strings attached. We want civic-minded, civic-spirited, patriotic members of Trinidad and Tobago. If you want a better Trinidad and Tobago, download the PEP app, social media. She handles our YouTube channel. Make sure everything is backed up on there. Listen, we have the best people. Right after this video, Chalana Birchwood is going to be doing one. I am sure I see in Derek Lawrence on the live tonight. So he and all might, might be motivated to do something. It's been a while since we've seen Janice Lemon Cricky on a live or Anthony Defu, and I want to encourage them. Jump out yourself too, not just because we're on the radio. At the start of next month, Michelle Davis and Ian Griffith joins us on the radio. We are training to extend from two days a week, Monday and Wednesday, to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Thanks to Robert and Sharon Amara for making it available to us. But it comes at a cost. Even though they give us a good deal, we still have to raise those funds. And if you would like to help with that, you could help with that too. Reach out to Felicia Holder. If you're not at the level where you could pay them kind of big monies, but you still want to help the party, we have a PayPal account. You could look up our PayPal account. I am sure the members on the thread right now will be happy to put the link for the PayPal account. $5, $10, $20, $50, $100. If you could put a standing order to give us $100 a month, many hands make light work. And we could do this. Everybody who hears this message comes on board. There is a reason the contract mafia don't want us to get media and we will pay for our media time. There is a reason they don't want us to get media because if we, if the Progressive Empowerment Party had gotten just the media it was entitled to, there wouldn't be one voter left in the PNM or the UNC. <laughs>
Pep Toronto is organizing a big back in times party of their own and we just put up that post today I can give you some information it's on June 1st the venue is Calypso Hut there's a door prize buffet dinner included it's just $35 Canadian join them go and check out the Pep Toronto page but the link is on my page and all the numbers and all the people for you to check now of course New York City Pep answer that because they're going to organize a bus and take a hundred people to the party but i know they're going to organize something too because they just come out of having their own corn um cow heel soup event that people mess messaging me and telling me i got a call on the phone today that say the soup was nice the team the team that is the progressive empowerment party local regional and international the team that is the pep is your party this is the first time and i'll tell you again Come and meet the people. Most people, when they join this party, they tell you they feel like they was here from the start. They can't believe they just come because you get fit right in to the family. Come and be a part of it. Put them out of power. because I realized today we did a poll that asked if the nightly hour long video is too long should we cut a half hour and tonight we do an hour and a half I apologize listen China Tobago we want a better nation all of this is for that and if you if you too want a better version of all that we should have been come and join us nothing we say you listen to it is counterintuitive it's basic common sense most of it you already knew and talking about since you're small what we didn't have was the power of the parliament you see a small handful of committed bandits have used two political parties to control government in Trinidad and Tobago to the disadvantage of the masses. It is time to flip the script on those asses and fix Trinidad and Tobago and to those who have used political office to plunder and pillage and loot our country. We warn you, go to temple, mosque and church and light candle and burn incense because if we see office, there will be justice in Trinidad and Tobago, all that you have taken, you will repay. We insist on it. Until tomorrow, to all of you who've been here with me tonight and all of you who are going to see this on the rerun and all of you who are going to share it and all of you who outpour all the love because every night after the video, Felicia tells me how well the PayPal does because people, while the video going on, goes to the PayPal account and makes a donation. Thank you very, very, very much. We appreciate you. We love you. Those of you who are in Trinidad and Tobago, this Saturday at noon, 19 Stanmore Avenue. See you there. Stay safe, Trinidad and Tobago.